I really think it starts with the contact list, okay? You want a clean contact list. You want to be updating your contact list. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of In the Den. I am here with Chris Sherlow. Chris Sherlow is our Director of Email and Content Marketing here at 1SEO. Welcome, Chris. Hey, CJ. How's it going? Good, Thanks for good. having me. I am excited. As you said prior to this, it's you know probably going to be the most we've spoken in several years. We don't always have the opportunity to sit around a, a table and, and go through things, so I'm happy to have you awesome. and excited for the insight you're going to provide today. Yeah, same here. Same here. Thank you. So let's go ahead and get into some myth busting, cool. right? I need to know. Let's put an end to the speculation. Is email marketing dead? Absolutely not. I assure you, CJ, email marketing is alive, well, and kicking. Um, in fact, I feel like it has one of the best ROIs in all of digital marketing. I mean, you can put together an email marketing campaign for just a couple of hundred bucks and it, you know, you can really, I mean, if you think about it, depending on your industry, or your products, that's just selling a couple products or maybe booking one or two jobs and you can pay for your entire email marketing budget for the entire year with just a small, you know, um, investment. Okay. So you guys heard it here, right? And, and if you don't agree, Chris Sherlow, reach out to him and ask That's him. Right. No, but let's let's dive into it, Chris. Sure. So if email marketing isn't dead, and as you said, there is a positive ROI there to be had, what should businesses be using email marketing for? Sure, great question. So you really want to leverage email marketing for a few things. Obviously, you want to stay front of mind with your branding, right? So let's take, for instance, um, a seal coating company, right? So if you're seal coating driveways and you have an email marketing campaign, the likelihood of somebody coming back to you for seal coating in that same year, in that same six month frame is probably small. So you gotta provide something of value to those people, right? Because you wanna stay front of mind, you want your brand to be front of mind with them. So when they do need some other seal coating or maybe they wanna you know, have, a, have somebody to refer them to or to refer those jobs to, you can kind of say, okay, I know a person because they're front of mind, right? So it's about providing valuable content because you got to think about it. People's inboxes are flooded with emails, right? Whether it's other email marketing campaigns, their personal stuff, their work stuff. She, I get hundreds of emails a day, and I'm sure you probably get somewhere around the same, if not more, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So we've got to fight for space in those inboxes, right? So providing something of value to your clients, to your customers, to your prospective customers is really what's going to be important here because, you know, people know when they're being marketed to, and it's just going to get marked as spam or ignored if you're just simply selling to them or telling them, oh, we have a discount on this or you need this service or that service. Really, you want to provide them something that is informational, something that, you know, they can take home with them, something that they, you know, that is educational for them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that what people forget about the whole purpose of email marketing really is to increase the lifetime value of your customer, right? Absolutely. For the most part. I mean, and there are odds and ends, right? If you sell an e-commerce product, you can use email marketing to try to hit a different audience if you're purchasing a list but for most business owners the value in it is going to be actually increasing that lifetime value by being able to keep people engaged and re-engaged with the brand adding promotions and different things like that that incite them to come back for additional or more services exactly um, so one of the things I want to do today is kind of go through some questions that some of our clients have asked, some things that we're kind of seeing. So I've, I've got a laundry list here for you. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right. Yeah. So, so let's talk about, in your opinion, what are some of the types of content that you've seen the best ROI in? Stating what I, what I previously mentioned, I see the best ROI in, in content that's engaging, right? That is um, asking the right questions, that has the right subject lines, and that really is providing the right stuff. I think that's a good balance of providing, like I said, informational stuff. We also want to talk, you want to be talking about your services, but you don't want to be smacking people over the head with it. You know what I mean? Because like I said, people are just going to simply say, okay, this is just, I'm being marketed to here, right? And they're just going to ignore. When you say, okay, let's say you're a garage door company, right? Okay, so you got your garage door maintenance, you got your garage door services. What about garage storage tactics, right? How's, what about garage, you know, any, any kind of like, you know, other ways you can use your garage that's not just so for like storing tricks, your cars, right? right? Okay. So you want to provide that kind of stuff because not only is it fun and, and you know, uh, can be a little lighthearted, but mm -hmm. also it's engaging with people because you know that they're going to say, okay, 
I, you know, this is helpful information for me. This is something that I can, you know, use in my real life. That's not just simply I need garage door services. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you answered a couple of other questions. So I was going to ask you about the messaging and then kind of about some of the, the unsexy industries, right? So you talked about, like, garage doors and you have electrical companies. Um, so, you know, the messaging for them a lot of times is hard, right, because they want to go in for just the sale, the sale, the sale. But sometimes you can sell without selling, um, to your point, and really focus on making sure that people understand, hey, we're an industry expert. We care about you. We care about your family. Here's some tips, tricks, like different solutions that you can offer that maybe isn't necessarily the product or service that you offer, but somehow parallel or aligned with it because now you're keeping your brand front of mind. 100%. Yes. Educating uh, your, you know, your customers, your clients, telling them what's going on. Obviously, there's a space for news and, and keeping people updated on what's going on with your company. You could talk about your company culture, but absolutely, we want to be educating and providing things that, that people can use in their everyday life because, let's face it, you know, your HVAC service or your garage door service or your seal coating, that's only happening once every often, maybe a couple times a year if you're staying up on your HVAC maintenance, but right. you're running into everyday problems in your garage that could be, you know, can be addressed with a monthly garage newsletter that's not simply based on here's why you need, you know, to change your springs to torsion springs. Or whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I love it. So that leads me to one of the next questions, which is we all know that Google's algorithm is very like spam happy, right? Mm -hmm. We here at 1SA, we're constantly reminding employees, hey, check your spam inbox. Things very easily get shoved into to spam because there's so many emails coming in. How do you think small businesses can avoid it? What are some tips that they can do to have a better chance of ending up in someone's inbox, aside from just the type of content? Good question. Great question, actually. Um, I really think it starts with the contact list, okay? You want a clean contact list. You want to be updating your contact list because, uh, you know, platforms like Constant Contact and MailChimp, they, you know, they want to uh, provide a good experience for the people that, you know, that their platform is being used to send out marketing assets. So we want to make sure we have their permission, number one, to be sending marketing assets to them. Uh, we want to make sure that all their, you know, the website, or excuse me, their, um, their email addresses are active, you know, because what happens is if you send out uh, an email or a newsletter to a list that has, you know, a number of unsubscribes or a number of bounced emails or even a number that's marked spam, that is um, kind of indicates to your, your platform, whether it's Constant Contact, MailChimp, whatever, that you might not be sending this email to the right people. And they can actually freeze your account and it can cause you know, heartaches for your, uh, for your email marketing campaign. So um, you want to make sure you have that good list. And you want to make sure that you have that consent whether it's uh, written or, or implied even consent, but you want to make sure that, um, you know, your, your list is clean and you're not going to get those marked as spams and, and marked as unbounced or, uh, or else you're going to have some problems. Yeah, and just for the audience out there, one thing that a lot of people don't know is that when people love to purchase these lists, right? Oh, I'm going to spearhead my marketing campaign by purchasing this marketing email list from, you know, X, Y, and Z company. But to Chris's point, if a lot of those emails unsubscribe for you or mark your emails as spam or those emails bounce back, that sends an indicator to Google or to Microsoft, whoever may be housing your email, that the emails you're sending out are likely spam. So that get your emails to actually go into other people's spam box because Google's trying to protect them or Microsoft is trying to protect them. So just be very, very cautious about purchasing email lists if you don't know for sure that those people agreed to be a part of that. Instead, it's much better idea to use your actual client customer list and then you can continue to grow that by targeting people that are like them and getting them to subscribe to your newsletter. You have a better chance of those hitting an inbox that actually wants to read that content that you're providing. Yes, absolutely. It's about relevant content and, you know, being being shown to the relevant audiences. So great ways to boost your list that aren't buying your list. Uh, you know, you said, you know, make sure you're trying to think of organically buying your or excuse me, organically growing your list. Um, other ways you can grow your list is through a small uh, social media campaign right. to add subscribers to your yeah. list. And as you said, lookalike audiences mm -hmm. as well. I mean, there's right. a ton of great ways that aren't simply just purchasing a list, which can be dangerous and, you know, can put you down a slippery slope. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely better to ask for permission, right? Absolutely. In this particular case, 100%, 100%. <laughs> sometimes it's the reverse, but in this case, <laughs> ask for permission. Yep. 
Um, so you mentioned Constant Contact and MailChimp, but there are so many different platforms you know, out there, and we get to experience quite a few of them because of the mass amount of clients that we have. What are some of those platforms that people could look into if they're interested in email marketing? Absolutely. So, um, excuse me. So you have your main two, as I mentioned, Constant Contact and MailChimp. I think most of us are familiar with that. Also, as we all know, HubSpot has a very robust dashboard that includes email marketing. You've got Marketing Pro, which lies in uh, Service Titan, which again, you know, that's, that's a robust, I mean, that's a very comprehensive dashboard with all your marketing tools there and all your assets. You've got Klaviyo, which is uh, kind of a lesser known marketing tool when it comes to email stuff, but it's great because it works very well with e -com side of things. So uh, there's a lot of great tools out there. There's a lot of great ways to, you know, to kind of automate things and, and to kind of keep things moving. Um, it's not never set it and forget it, but there is an element of setting things up, making sure things are working properly, and then letting them run and do their thing. Yeah, and a lot of CRMs, you mentioned HubSpot, and you mentioned Service Titan, but also Salesforce. Salesforce has Pardot and other mm -hmm. platforms. So if you have a, a CRM system, you might want to check in and see if it already offers email marketing, because it's a great opportunity because your clients are there, they're in there, their email is in there and you can utilize them to send out those email marketing campaigns. Yep. Um, so let's finish up some of the do's and then we'll kind of move into some of the fun stuff. Okay. But one question that we get all the time is how do I track you know, my success when it comes to email marketing? Um, what are your thoughts on there? Sure. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we're data driven. Uh, we do the same thing at one SEO and, and you guys at home should be doing the same thing. You should be, you know, tracking every single thing that you're putting out to see what's working, what's not. I mean, it'll allow you to pivot, make adjustments or hone in on the stuff that is working. So uh, a lot of people get caught up in the open rate and the click rate, right? I mean, these are okay numbers. Sometimes they can be skewed a little bit. So I don't think that they're the end all be all, but it can provide you, I guess, like a, a top level understanding of how the email is performing. Furthermore, you can actually, in some of the platforms, you can get into heat maps, which will show you specifically where people are clicking, right? So you can say, okay, they're not really making it past this point of the email, so maybe it makes sense to shorten the emails moving forward. Or maybe you see that they're clicking on the imagery and nothing else, not the links or anything else. So perhaps you might want to say, okay, next time let's try more imagery. Um, either way, really what you want to be doing is checking in Google Analytics to see your conversions. To me, that's really the, the gold standard of how I measure the ROI of these newsletters. Uh, and one thing you want to be doing is uh, UTM tracking. You can't measure the stuff without UTM tracking. Uh, ask me if you want to know more about UTM <laughs> tracking. Uh, but essentially, that's the way we can see, you know, what's what's you know where people are coming from when they convert. Specifically, what you know what email campaign they came from, or or what call tracking number that they use from the email campaign yeah, uh, to find the site or to call in. So that's super important. Like I said, I think that's that's kind of the gold standard for yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. Conversions definitely count, right? It's, yep. And I, you know, people might hate us for that. Don't hate us. But I agree with you on the on the open rate, right? And I know for a fact that I am I am a culprit. I I mess up people's open rate because one habit that I have when I sit down in my in front of my computer in the morning and I'm kind of going through emails I will click it and hit delete click delete <laughs> click delete. I don't read it I know it's spam but just my method of deleting sure. you know emails or whatever is I you know I just click it open I see it big screen to make sure I'm not missing anything and I delete it haven't read a single thing so the heat maps to your point would tell people oh I thought she really liked my emails no not at all <laughs> and I'm not a big spammer like I don't typically mark things as spam unless I'm constantly getting you know the same thing over and over again but definitely a culprit and agree with you on the the open rate it's it's not the best telltale right. of how it's performing so let's get into some of the the don'ts right so now that everybody listening is is an expert like you Chris um, what are some big don'ts of email marketing um, when it comes to what shouldn't businesses be doing when it comes to their email marketing okay great questions um, let's see I think one of the main things that, and we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier but one of the main things I see when I'm when I'm looking at an existing campaign uh, that maybe needs some you know some tweaking is that we are being too salesy right we forget that there's a client there's a potential customer on the other end of that email you know because as a business owner you sometimes inhabit that oh here's what I want them to know about my business but you're not thinking about what as an audience member like a receiver as a user what they might want to 
be receiving or what their experience might be. So as I said before, you want to make sure that you're kind of balancing, you know, the offering of your services or your discount or whatever your special is with something that's really educational or valuable to, to you know, to the, to the user. Um, so in this case, I would say if you have something that is a great idea, right, and you think it's witty, go for it. And, you know, think about you, I mean, without a strategy, you know, you're going to be dead in the water. And I guess this is another don't right mm -hmm. because these two things come go hand in hand uh, but you want a strategy when you're setting up your emails right uh, you don't want to just be you want to know exactly what you're going to send way before you send it you know you have uh, usually here at one seo as you know we do uh, three to six month email marketing strategies and that's including you know any of the seasonality that we're including we want to make sure we're sending those hey don't forget to get your you know your hvac system uh, you know, tuned up before he, uh, heating, heating season or, or AC season, right? But having a strategy is really the way I think that you can kind of hone in and understand, okay, we're talking about this service in this month. Maybe it makes sense to not keep saying it in month two, three, and four, but maybe spread it out and have some kind of, like I said, a balance there. Okay, so we've talked uh, about the simplicity um, and ease of use of some of the platforms to be able to do email marketing. We've talked about some of the complexities, as you mentioned, like coming up with three to six month, you know, calendars of, of what your email marketing is going to look like in the future. In your opinion, is this something that business owners can do themselves? Do they have to use an agency? Uh, what's your opinion on that? Sure. I mean, business owners can absolutely do this themselves just the same way you can give yourself a tattoo or provide yourself with a spleenectomy okay <laughs> right good analogy uh, you can you can absolutely you know watch a youtube video or look some stuff up online or find a blog with the you know the best the do's and don'ts of email marketing or anything like that right but at the end of the day there are like hidden complexities there's a level of experience that comes into stuff like this that things that i'm looking for in email marketing campaigns you know, it might, might not be exactly what uh, a business owner is looking for, somebody who's newer to that, uh, to that, that space. So um, apps, can you do it on your own? Absolutely. Should you rely on a professional to help you? 1,000%. Yeah. And I, I'm going to say to that point, if you're just looking to send out, you know, a regular email that's, you know, from the president or from the owner, just keeping, you know, some vague information in front of people or in front of your employees, that's okay. Go for it. You're, you're not necessarily caring about the metrics and the data. But when it comes to, you know, providing an email marketing campaign that is going to have an ROI, that's when the data and the metrics and really tweaking your strategy based on previous results and things like that come into play and a lot of business owners don't have time to do it so don't feel like you're doing anything wrong by reaching out and asking for help in that particular regard because it's not as simple as it you know as it appears or not as simple as it was back in the day you've got to fight through the algorithm to get the email seen and you've got to be able to make sure that you're hitting the right audience and using the list correctly um, so Chris as the final roar here let's do some predictions right what do you where do you think email marketing is headed as we kind of fast forward over over the next couple of years, what do you see coming down? That's a great question. Ooh, I put I you love, on the spot. <laughs> I love that question. I would like to. I would like to say, and what I think we'll see is more interactivity with the emails, more ways to engage. Uh, you know, we're always at One SEO, as you know. You know, we're always looking to level things up. We recently, I think, like about a year ago, started including gifts or gifs, depending yep. on how you <laughs> how you shake it um, in our emails, because really that's that it's attention grabbing and it's kind of a fun way to you know to 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 speak to people, right? Uh, but I think moving forward, yeah, interactivity would be the next thing on the horizon in terms of. Uh, I mean, we've already seen stuff with polls and, and quizzes and stuff mm -hmm. like that, which we sometimes use, too, in emails. But I think taking it a step further will be, certainly be uh, what's next out okay. there. Yeah, and I think we could do a poll right now. Guys, if you say GIF or if you say GIF, let us know in the comments, all right? Let us know. It's let's, GIF. Let's, <laughs> I agree with you, but hey, you know. <laughs> Well, Chris, I thank you so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. To all the audience members out there, if you need any help or assistance with your email marketing or have any questions that we didn't touch on today, please feel free to reach out to us. And we look forward to seeing you next time here in the den.